So hello people, uh, let's start the video. Uh, we are going to be discussing the problem of the day. Today, the problem that we have is sum of XOR of all pairs. All right. So let's read the problem. The problem is saying given an array of n integers, find the sum of XOR of all pairs of numbers in the array ARR. All right. In other words, select all the possible pairs of i and j from 0 to n minus 1 and determine sum of all the XORs. Okay, so what do we have to do now? Let's try understanding by uh, this example. Here is the example, right? The example is saying we have an array. The array is having three elements, which is seven, three, and five, correct? And the output that we have is 12. How are we reaching the output? Let's see. So if we have three elements, let's make up the pairs. We can have three, uh, seven and three. We can have three and five. And we can have, okay, we can have 7 and 3, 3 and 5 and 7 and 5, right? These are the possible pairs that we can have. We have to find XOR of all the pairs. Now, what will we do? We'll find out the XOR. Let's do it quickly. What are the binary representations of it? We have 7 and 1, 1, 1, right? And for 3, what do we have? For 3, we have 2 and 3. This is 0, correct? When we XOR it, what is the property of XOR? Same values turn to 0. Different values 1, 0, or 0, 1 turn to 1. Correct? Same value 0, same value 0, different value 1. Correct? We have 1, 0, 0. And what is 1, 0, 0? If we talk about numbers, we have 4. Right? We talk about decimal numbers basically. So now we have 3 XOR 5. Let's see the binary representation of 3. It is your 1 and 1 here, between 0. For 5, it is going to be 4 and 1, 5, 0 in the middle. We have the binary representations. So let's XOR it. It will be 0, 1 and 1, 4, 5, 6. The answer will be 6, right? Now we have 7 and 5. 7, we know it is 1, 1, 1. 5, we know it is 4 and 1, 5. Now if we have to XOR it, if we have to XOR it, same value 0, different value 1, same value 0. We have 0, 1, 0. What is uh, the decimal value of it? It is 2. Right? So we have found out all the XORs, all the XORs of the possible pairs. Now we have to sum it up and give it as the answer. So now if we sum it, it will be 4 plus 6 plus 2, which results in 12. Right? And this is the output that we are giving. So now the question is clear, right? What we are doing is clear. We have to think of approach, which is appropriate, which is efficient. So the very first approach that comes to everybody's mind is the brute force one. What will we do? We will find out all the pairs. We will find out the XOR of everything and then we'll add it up. For that, what we can do is we can use nested for loops. The first for loop will run from I to N. And the next uh, having J would, uh, can run from I plus 1 till N, right? So this will give us all the possible pairs, right? Then we have to find XORs of all the pairs. We need to keep on storing that. We need to keep on adding that. And eventually, we have to return the sum. But what is the problem with this approach? This approach is not optimized. This would be taking N squared time, right? Well, it is going to take an N plus 1 by 2. But asymptotically, we have n square, right? It will be taking O n square. We do not need that. We need to figure out some better approach for it. Well, yeah, uh, this is also an example. You can try calculating that yourself. The answer will eventually uh, come out to be 47. Now let's discuss the approach. Let's discuss the approach for the question. A better approach other than the nested loops. What we can do for that. Let me first uh, give you a little glimpse of these. We have the same example. We have 7, 3, 5 here. I've written the binary representation of all here. I've written the possible pairs and we are finding out XORs uh, among the pairs. Fine. So when I have done this, 7 XOR 3, let's do it again. Okay, let me just see the values. For here we have 7 XOR 3 is 4, 6 and 2. Which is 4, this is 6 and this is 2. Right. Along with that, let me write the binary representations. It is 4, so it is going to be 100. This is your 6, it is going to be 4 plus 2. 
So your two is going to be this, correct? So we know that these are all the possible pairs that we have found. Now, I know that the sum is 12, correct? The sum is 12. We have calculated it with our uh, decimal values. But what if we need to represent that in the terms of uh, in the terms of your binary, or we can say if you uh, remember number system a little, how about representing twelve in binary number system? How would that look like? Well, let's talk about the zeroth position of all the elements of all the pairs of all the pairs XOR that we have for zeroth. That means two to the power zero for this element. We have no one, no one is said. That means number of ones is zero. We are going to multiply that with the base value. What is the value of two to the power n here? It is two to the power zero, right? So we have this value, correct? Then what should we add with it? We have to say two to the power one. How many ones do we have here in this first column? We have two ones this time. So I can say two values are set. I have to multiply two with the base value, what is the base value? We have 2 to the power 1, correct? Now, calculating the same for 2 to the power 2, that means the second, the second column. For the second column, we have, again, we have two ones. So I can say 2 multiplied with 2 to the power 2, right? I can write it this way, in binary number system. And then if I have to calculate it, what will it turn out to be? It will say 2 into 4 plus 2 into 2 plus 0, correct? which will give us 8 plus 4 plus 0, which will result in 12. This is what we have represented, right? So we know if we have calculated the pairs, if we have calculated the pairs, we are actually not making the use of the zeros. We have made all the pairs, but we are not actually using the zeros of those positions. If I talk about the zeroth position, I'm not using any of the zeros here. Assume there was one pair, A, X or B, one more pair here, and it was having one. I only needed this pair for the zeroth iteration. For the zeroth iteration, I only needed this pair. I did not need the other pairs because they are not contributing. Because they are not contributing to the final answer. Fine. Now, this is a little apart from the question, but you should understand that what we are finding out. We have to find out the pairs that are actually contributing to the main sum. These are zeros because XOR of these individual positions is zero. The result of XOR is zero. And when the XOR is zero, when the values are same. Correct? At these positions, the values of XOR are zero. Okay. Let's make up pairs now. <clears throat> Let's try thinking of pairs. Now focus on these three values, these three values, right? The combinations are going to be made out of these only, right? So how about instead of looking them uh, as a decimal number, we start looking them as binary. We start looking them as binary. And here I can get, I can get the number of possible pairs which will actually be contributing to the main answer, right? And I am not doing it like a wholly, I am not making the complete pairs, I am just talking about the individual positions. So firstly, I would find out all the pairs which are contributing to the main answers with respect to the zeroth position, okay? Then the first position uh, and then the second position. So for the first position, can you tell me how many possible pairs are there? How many possible pairs are there? We have seen it is 0, 0, 0. No answer is contributing. And why is that? Because we have all the ones. So any possible choice that you make, these two ones or these two ones or these two ones would be ending up in 0. Correct? Now let's talk about the first column, this one. Well, here you do have combination of ones and zeros. So once you make a pair of one and one, this will be resulting in 0. But once you make a pair of this 1 and 0, this will result in 1. Once you make a pair of this 1 and 0, this will result in 1. So you have two ones now. You only need these two ones. Okay. That means you have two pairs which will be contributing to the main answer. Alright. How do we get to know 
this number? How do we find this number? This number depends upon your combinations. How many combinations you are able to make? Let's simply see one thing. If you have two numbers, A and B, number of possible combinations, 1 into 1, that means 1. Only A, B could be the combination. Now if I say you have uh, A1, A2, and you have B1, B2, and B3. Correct? You have two sets and you have to make up combinations. Correct? A1 will go with each and every B. A2 will go with each and every B. That means your 2 is getting multiplied with 3 and the total number of combinations that you will form is 6. So now what you have to do? You need to see how many 1s and zeros are there. What sort of pairs are there? See, we know clearly that when we are making pairs of 1 XOR 1 and when we, once we are doing 0 XOR 0, that will be resulting in 0. Correct? Property of XOR, same numbers, turn to 0. So if we figure out how many zeros we have in that particular iteration, in that particular column, and how many 1s we have. So number of zeros could be 2, number of 1s could be uh, 3. If we have 3 1s, and then we make up the combination, what it could be? It would be this first 0 with all the 3 1s. That will, uh, that will be 0, 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1. And then again, this next 0 with all the 3 1s. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So what happened? What is the number of possible combinations? It is 6. How did we find it? Number of zeros, 2. Number of 1s, 3. We found out, we multiplied it. We found out how many possible pairs are there which will be contributing actually to the real answer. Right? Now, I hope this is getting clear in your head. What do we actually need to do? We need to travel this array. We need to travel this array. And every time we are reaching this position, every time we are, uh, you know, at an element, what do we have to do? We have to check the elements of one single column of their binary value. That means if you're talking about zeroth, we'd be checking zeroth of every. And when, once you're talking about first, we'd be checking first of every. Once you're talking about uh, second, we'll be checking off. Uh, we'll be checking second of every element, right? Now, what do we have to do? Correct. We have to figure out for every column, for every position, be it zero at first or second. For every position, we need to calculate number of ones and number of zeros. Correct. Because once we are making ones, we are going to make combinations of ones and zeros. Only then it will be acceptable answer because that will result to one, and one we have seen is contributing to the main answer. Correct. Now I hope the motive of uh, the motive that we have molded so far is clear to you. So after that, once we have received the number of ones and the number of zero, what we are going to do? We are going to multiply that to find out number of pairs, number of possible pairs. Once we have found out that, uh, let's say, here two pairs are there who are actually contributing. What do we have to do then? We have to find out the you can say magnitude or the value it has. Two pairs multiplied with how many values will they be generating? This depends upon the position, upon the, you can say, the ith column that is has when we talk about the binary representation. So if you're talking about the second column or the second position, we are, second, uh, we are filling the second position. So two pairs for that second position will actually be making two to the power two. That means that will be resulting in two multiplied with four and eight as the main answer that we have to keep on adding. All right, now let's try to implement this. Well, the code is here. Let's see what is happening. We, are, uh, we have just initialized one answer variable, which will be uh, storing the answer eventually, and we are returning that. Then what do we have to do? I've taken this length equals ARR. That means I am just calculating my length of my array. <clears throat> then I'm doing this thing for 32 times by because the numbers that are that we are given the range of are going to be less than 32 only. They are not going to, uh, you know, go beyond 32 bits. All the integers that we are taking are going to be inside 32 bits. Now, because we have to do this, because we have to uh, run this for, what we are actually running it for? We are running it for calculating, again, just what we have seen for the zeroth column, for the first column, for the second column, for the third column, up till for the 31st column, okay, like that. For the 31st column, we are going to be calculating this. 
what we are calculating? We are calculating the number of ones, we are calculating the number of zeros. So for those, I have uh, I have two counters, zero count and one count. Then I am going through the uh, whole array. I'm going through the whole array. What I'm going to do? I'm going through the whole array. At every point I'm checking if the number is even, what does that mean? If the last bit is set or not. If that is even, that means the last bit is not set, right? And we are going to increase the count of zero. Else, obviously, if that is not even, that means the last bit is set and it is odd. And we are going to be increasing the number of one, correct? And what we are doing here, we are just dividing number by zero. You already can shift it up to you, how you are traveling your bit. Once this is done, for one iteration, let's talk about the zero. For zero iteration, you will be having count of zero, count of one and count of zero, correct? To find out number of possible pairs, you need to multiply those, right? If you have two zeros and three ones, again, the answer is going to be six for all the combinations. You have the number of pairs there. Then what will be the value? What will be the value that will be contributing to your main answer? That is going to be a pair multiplied with the two power you are the two power you have. It, so it, this is just for you know, depending upon the iteration, you need to do it two to the power zero, two to the power one. This is just for that. Okay. Now what do we have to do? We have to calculate, we have to have the sum value, the main counter that we have. We are going to keep on adding all the values of it. We are going to keep on adding all the values to it. Once that is done, we have to return sum. Okay. I hope the approach is clear to you and you understand that why we are traveling this vertically, why we are traveling all the numbers with the respect of their binary representation because this is actually bringing it down to ON. How? See, you are doing something for 32 times. That means 32 multiplied with something. What is something? We are iterating the whole array. And whole array is n. So what you're doing, you're doing the iteration, you're doing the traversals for 32 times. Because this is a number that is going to be fixed, so we can keep it as constant. And eventually what we can say that it is o n, right? So I hope you have understood this approach. Let's try running that and see if it is working with all the test cases. Here's the same code. Let's compile it. Okay, it is getting compiled successfully, giving us the right output. Let's submit that. Okay, so it is passing all the test cases. Uh, I hope you've understood the problem. And this problem was really interesting. If you still have any doubt, try to rewatch the video. And just tell me in the comments, did you like the explanation or not? All right, uh, see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.